Hi, I'm Barry John, and welcome back to Let's Play Overload. I have co-pilots, and I'll let them introduce themselves. I am A172, and I just came out of a personal wormhole, and I have no idea what's going on. Hi, this is Crazy Ahmed. I leave for one video, and you guys have teleported to an alien dimension. What? I'm Laylight, and I've just come out of a computer glitch, apparently. Ah, uh, so, uh, our lovely computer on the Iberia has uploaded a message for us probably compressed and uh, burst transmission on the way out. But now we're just getting the last uh, the last major plot dump from the sit of Cronus Frontier. Computer. The first sovereign is in Cantor's possession. The second is on board the IP. Uh oh. The third is still missing. Cantor is not aware I located the second sovereign. If you were to find out I placed it on the Iberia, my life would be in danger. Cantor is paranoid, obsessive, and violent. You don't say. Found the alien ship. Refresh me on what the sovereigns are. Their discovery is secret. Alien uh, AIs. Someone dug up. Tears now in danger. Yeah, the the, yeah. the alien spaceship that we flew through at the end of last level uh, was piloted by three AIs. Anomalies we have observed. And that one of sounds like an understatement. Yeah, and one of them was uh, on our ship, the Iberia. But welcome to Signasoria. Well, of course we need a custom track and custom textures. Custom everything! In the Kodachi gunship, you followed me here through the portal. I didn't think the portal... We've entered the vaporwave dimension, it seems. Traveler. But here you are. Oh, this hi there. A, uh... Do you know where we are? Do you know what this place is? The, the geometry of it, and I, I, I don't know how to say this non-pejoratively, but I don't mean this as a negative. It has a little bit of a Descent 3 look to the level of it. Of like how they had some of the outdoor levels and whatnot. Yeah, I was thinking but half life Zen vibes. Good. <laughs> so, welcome to the alien levels. Uh, our enemies are going to be purple and they are going to be throwing their own version of fusion shots at us. That sounds painful. Oh dear. A little bit. But uh, the thing is, is that there are no regular power ups, there are no logs left. Uh, the red guy... Okay, yes, there are some power-ups here, but... It's a gameplay convention. But uh, the little red spheres that the enemies drop when they die now, those will increase our shields, our energy, and our ammo count all at once. Oh, that's convenient. Those things that's... look kind of modeled after those uh, Valkyries that we saw earlier, but they're obviously armed differently. It's interesting conceit to have the... Um... Uh, the one enemy that stood out as being differently designed be a harbinger of these uh, alien designs. That makes sense. It's the other Kanto way around. was probably cribbing off them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just as you said, it, a or just as you said there, Ahmed, so the Valkyries were designed based on these aliens. Shut off its transponder. So I'm thinking. That's some tracking on your fusion, though. Pirate. Yep. Or whatever the fusion is called now. The thunder. It's the fusion beam. Okay. Well, this obviously throws a wrench into my extremely early theory that we were uh, Cantor with amnesia, so unless this is a long con, probably off the table now. Just a little bit. So, uh, how best do I describe this? There is, not only has, uh, have Cantors been inspired by alien designs for his ships, the aliens have also been, uh, making new robots based on Cantor's design. So you can see, like, the Xeno Kraken, and later on there'll be the Xeno Scourge. And these are all ships that are now upgraded to fire fusion weapons of some degree or another. So it's all fusion all the time, with maybe some slight exceptions? It's all purple, all the time. Let, let me get this straight. By the time I'm done with these set, sets levels, I'm going to be sick and tired of the color purple. No uh, synth wave or uh, uh, what? No, we're putting you on a uh, strict diet of classical music. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised the missiles aren't purple, honestly. Uh. What we've got here in this triangle is what's called the tr energy switch. In order to turn on now. In order to turn on these switches, you have to hit them with the Thunderbolt, or the next weapon I'm going to be picking up in this level. 
they won't turn on unless you hit them with an alien gun. And that's what the Thunderbolt is. It's Cantor's attempts to uh, re-engineer an alien weapon and came up with this instead. Well, I hope there's an energy uh, recharge center somewhere around here so you don't get soft locked then. Would a flare Actually, work for this? No, but here's the thing though. Something that hasn't really come up because the game balances a lot better is that even if you have zero energy, you can still fire energy weapons. They just fire very slowly. Oh, interesting. That's a nice conceit. Mm, yeah. That and is a very, the... very general anti-soft lock mechanism. Yeah, so like you can like if you had zero energy, you could still fire all of your guns, except the ammo-based ones. But, you know, instead of just holding down the trigger and pow da pow da pow da pow, it's more like thunka, thunka, thunka. That's pretty fair. There was a special kind of adrenaline rush in Classic Descent for when you just had no energy and no ammo left. And you were just, like, racing through trying to dodge stuff, get to an energy center enough to charge up enough to take out some other bad guys to get some ammo. And, like, there was a special kind of rush to that. Oh, it yeah. Pretty much never ended well. But, yeah. I'm just glad that these uh, purple crystals aren't uh, don't seem to be harming us. I was kind of expecting them to just explode. But they seem uh, pretty, like, just decoration at this point. Yeah. They're light source and environmental. Also, this is actually lava, this green gunk. If you run into it, uh, it basically acts as lava. Does it explode? Now, how sure well does it splash? Yeah. It splashes well enough that at some point, either during this run or one of my practice runs, I actually do kill a person by exploding the lava underneath them. Like that, actually. Yeah, seems kind of normal, but fair enough. So is that actually melted rock lava, or is it just, like, generic hurts you, maybe acid, maybe lava, maybe something else? It's generic. Good old industrial goo. Yep. It's good to know that the aliens have the same sense of occupational health and safety as uh, the PTMC does. <laughs> Rivers of hazardous goo all over the place or lava. You know, first day on the job, you ask your boss, like, hey, this door's locked, how do I get through it? Oh, here you go. Take this fusion cannon. Yeah. <laughs> but so we actually see here a couple of enemy... Oh types that we're not going to see. Uh, basically, what we're seeing here in this little hidden side passage, and the Lancer, oh, the last pointy. direct fire weapon in the game. Very this pointy. This is basically the... Uh, it's like the fusion beam, except where the fusion beam has the charge up... Oop, has the charge up to it. This is more like... Uh, oh, you can see it here, basically. It looks it, kind of like a cross between the plasma rifle and the fusion cannon, so to say. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it is neat that we, once again, we see the enemies use a weapon, and now we're allowed to have it. Yeah. But as I mentioned in the thread, like, you know, how there was one weapon that, you know, there's absolutely no justification for why we're able to pick it up and use it? Well, here it is. Yep. Now, the question, of course, becomes, can we upgrade this thing? Here's the thing, though. We've been upgrading our ship and all the weapons on it when we're on the Iberia. But now that we've been separated from the Iberia, we can't upgrade between levels. Oh, so the That's Iberia is the carrier rude. ship and we're the uh, shuttle. Yes, we're the Kodachi gunship that's been attached to the Iberia. It's still probably safe to assume that Last Sovereign has its claws in our gunship, but that at least helps clarify the relationship a little bit. Well, one Sovereign is with Cantor, who is apparently somewhere around here. One Sovereign is on the Iberia, and the third Sovereign's location is currently unknown. Well, they wouldn't have put it in, like, Nebraska, so it's somewhere plot important. No. Uh, so, the Lancer can also be used to activate these energy switches. Uh, however, the thing is, is that the Thunderbolt 
activates the switches for longer than the Lancer. What do you think they're looking for? And what happens when they find it? Assimilation? Annihilation? You're not doing yourself any favors there, Cantor. I guess if you did want to plot relevant reason for why we can pick up the Lancer, then you could potentially say that, uh, who's that character? Harper Eames, who did a bunch of stuff that we don't know about quite yet to the Iberia, might have also modified our gunship to accept the alien tech that she's been working with. Yeah, I mean, I think being able to pick up the Thunderbolt was a good head start, but uh, yeah, it's, you kind of have to resort to those kinds of explanations. Uh, you might have also noticed or not that I've picked up the also the last missile weapon, uh, which is the Vortex. Uh, it's the Black Shark, just without ah. the uh, without the suicidal overconfidence I come from firing it. <laughs> so above you there, it looked like there was like a, a false ceiling that you flew through. Is yep. that what I saw? Yeah, it's a and interconnected. It's illusionary. I have one of them with me okay. here. And I take it then there were already mechanics establishing that for you earlier? Nope. So that's new in this level? Yep, that's new in this level. Okay. ...is proportional to the amount of energy they can draw from their environment. Back on Enceladus, that wasn't very much. But here, I think this Sovereign might be communicating with her two sisters, wherever they are. That now, actually implies that it's easier to send a message from an area with high energy than it is to reply back from an area with low energy. Interesting. It... I, I'm not... The Sovereigns are uh, Clark Tech at this point. These yeah. Aliens have achieved singularity. They can upload consciousness. Each Sovereign core was once an organic life form. Maybe multiple life forms. How long do you think it will take humanity to reach this level? A thousand years? A hundred thousand? Maybe I won't have to wait so long. Yeah, Anybody I was about getting... to say. Go ahead. Anybody else getting Reaper vibes? Mass Effect? I was just going to say classic Tech Pro CEO. Checks out. Yeah, I mean, it sure sounds like if they already did it, then, like, uh, who's to say they didn't already do it to Cantor and he just doesn't realize it yet? I just want to point out uh, the Spectralis I just fought there. Yes, it does teleport. Oh, goody. Nice. However, it does tend to teleport towards you. And it only teleports when its wings have fully glowed. Or are fully glowing. Okay, that at least gives you a bit of a hint. Yeah. Um, so to pick up a... Go ahead, you were saying? Holding your own out here. I was saying visual feedback is good. Trained. Piracy interdiction? That's where all the action is, right? I know the type. Do you not get a map on this level? Is, yes, you get a map. Is that the gunship from Iberia? Wait for it. Iberia left Titan six months ago. Why? Did Juno tell you to come back? You're Alex Warden, aren't you? Never figured out what you and Harper were up to. And I killed her. I killed them all. Or I planned to. The auto op execution protocol triggered prematurely. I don't know how. I don't usually make those kinds of mistakes. I didn't want to leave anything behind. Cronus Frontier. All those people, I was done with them. They had nothing more of value to contribute. They lied to me, betrayed me, sabotaged my work, spied for my enemies, even Harper. That was a lot to process. Yeah, I'll, I'll say. Um, I mean, from his point of view, I suppose all of that is correct. So what you're um, about to see... Oh, sorry. What you're ahead. about to see here is me completely and utterly fail to get into that secret room because the timing on this is ridiculously tight. I oh, have is to... this another one of those one-shot uh, switch operations? No. Uh, 
it's one of those it, basically the time uh, there's a couple of switches I have to hit and the time one switch to open this door and another switch to open the door leading into the secret room and I have to hit them in a specific the timing on it is I have to shoot one switch, run to the other switch, shoot that switch, run to the door to get through before the first door closes, or before the first switch times out. Oh, so it's a tight timer run, but it's through one of these cave-like corridors, just like uh, some of the ones in the original Descent 2. Yeah. Do you get more than yeah, one shot? Yeah, it sounds like a lot that you have to get just right. It's yeah, enough that I didn't my question. Bother. Sorry? Oh, I was just asking if you got more than one shot at it, but it looks like you're about to go for another run. Yeah, I just have to find the second switch. To uh, pick back up a thought I was having much earlier in this video, um, I am at somewhat impressed that uh, they still went with kind of the industrial and cave uh, mixture of aesthetics here. They definitely tried to differentiate it as much as possible. Um, but I'm glad that they did not go for the uh, flesh uh, route that we've seen in so many other alien dimensions. Mm -hmm. Including but not limited to Century Mercenary. Yeah, so they definitely are still going with a very mechanical theme, fitting for an alien nation full of robots, so to say. Like, this whole thing is definitely robot built. Um, so now that you have the fusion gun and the um, Lancer, um, do you need uh, things like the um, uh, plasma rifle anymore? No. Alright, sorry, this is me just trying to figure things out here, because... It's... Eh, what do I want to say? I'm just enjoying how good the, the headlights were. There was... Oh. Descent 3's headlights were the worst. It would highlight, like, one polygon at a time. <laughs> and they're just like, when you're in a cave, that does, is just totally useless. So I'm just appreciating that it works. Yeah, there is some pretty lighting as well. Actually, speaking of Descent 3, um, we do see that the Lancer kind of projects those two laser beams in front of you. Does it have that same um, centerline issue that some of those uh, Descent 3 weapons had, where you kind of shoot around enemies sometimes? Uh, actually, no. This, this game solved that by simply not having those tiny little enemies. Yeah, everything does seem like it's kind of as wide as your ship or wider, so I guess that helps. Yeah, I say it didn't seem like there was that small of a, or that large of a gap between them. So. And that was me not pulling it off. Close, though. So that panel was yeah. supposed to be open? You, no, I didn't... I got lost, and I didn't quite hit my turn properly. Oh man, if and only there was some way of marking a direct path from A to B. Yeah, if only. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way, and I'm... I can't believe I spent so much of this video just trying to get through this one secret room. I'm like, yeah, you know what, it, at some point, it's just not worth it. So what is even in that secret room? Just, like, missiles and whatnot? Yeah, nothing special. So no upgrade points to worry about. Nope, because we can't Phew. get back to the we can't get back to the can't Iberia to be fixed or anything like that. There's no more upgrades. All right, what what, is that the ship you have is the ship you have. Sorry, I was just asking what that little glowy thing was, but that's a switch you can. Hang on. So if you're one of those players who's been hoarding upgrade points and you get to this level, then it's like, surprise, sucky, you need to load an earlier save and replay the previous level if you want to spend it. Pretty much. Yeah, wow. you'd have to uh, load to back before um, Enceladus. Uh, prior to Enceladus is your last chance. Yep. That's pretty rude, given the fact that for pretty much everything else in this game, they're quite fair, everything's quite signposted. Yeah, just looking in there, it's there's nothing worth really fighting over to get into that area with. 
Yeah, I mean, you can maybe think about, I mean, if, if you knew that you were going to Enceladus, you might upgrade a whole bunch in anticipation of a boss fight there, but still, it is kind of rude to not give you a last chance there. But to be fair, they're not exactly handing out upgrade points at this point either. Yeah, because those are things you have to actually collect, right? It's not just like you get it from XP of killing robots and stuff like that. Yeah, that's correct. You actually have to seek out the, the pickup. Yeah, no, the yeah XP and I suppose on the higher price. difficulties, you'd want to use those upgrade points as soon as you got them, too. The XP meter is basically a score counter, yeah? Yes, it also does things for challenge mode. Uh, the XP you earn in single player gets uh, open, unlocks uh, bonuses in challenge mode. Oh, so it's some meta progression to not let you unlock the complicated features too quickly? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, kind of lame, but understandable. I could have sworn I used the driller more often on this level. Wow, was that enemy actually taking cover, or was it just drifting over there? It was taking cover. Wow, four Devastators. Oh boy. Well, to be fair, it was a super Devastator pack, so I think I've got like 10 out of 6 now. Or 11 out of 6, <laughs> sorry. Are the uh, Devastators the Mega Missile equivalent? Pretty much, yeah. We haven't seen any alien hulks yet. I'm a little worried. There we go. Wow, 200 shields, 193 energy, 525 ammo. That, that, I'm rocking in, in resources right now. Yeah, I suppose, uh, well, uh, th those uh, Omni resource pickups are doing their job then. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't drop off a lot at a time, but they do drop it off. And there's an invisibility back there that I skip over because, well, don't really need it. So you said that there weren't any keys in this level then, so it's just no. a matter of uh, navigating through the maze and finding the one bottleneck area that you actually need to go through? Yeah, and uh, having the Thunderbolt or the Lancer ready to uh, charge up these energy. Oop. So I guess it's uh, not quite a linear gauntlet, I guess it's more like a Sonic level, so to say. Yeah. That's one way of looking at it. And this is me just checking out the map again. There's another portal here. Another alien world. Some other place thousands of light years away. There's no way back, you know. And even if you found your way home, how much time has passed? 15 minutes? 15,000 years. Goodbye, Lieutenant. If you make it this far, I'll see you on the other side. He does have a point, though. Like, wormholes aren't exactly playing nice with traditional space-time in the first place. Yeah, in fact, we could uh, arrive uh, back on Earth before we left. That would be interesting. Yeah, totally no boss speculation there. But anyway, we know we're going the right way because Cantor said something new. And we're seeing more, uh, more enemies. Yeah, this doesn't seem like the kind of game where you would get a new log just from uh, time-based, but rather than sector-based progress. So, I mean, it would be weird if uh, you were just kind of sitting around for five minutes and then uh, Cantor said something else. Or just uh, made fun of you for getting lost. <laughs> I'm just picturing Cantor accidentally hitting the taunt button. <laughs> and the door closed on me, so it just automatically pushed me backwards. Okay, good. It's not a crushing door, then. This isn't no. that kind of game. And there so is a, pow there is a powered-down portal here. Huh. 
We're we're not that far behind Cantor. All right. Well, what are those purple spikes on the ceiling, or balls inside the spikes? Very suspicious. You'll find out shortly. Okay. I mean, it's purple. That means uh, it's important. Yep. Unfortunately, it takes me way too long to remember what to do with these things. Oh, ah, here we Thanks, go. game. Now, to be fair, activating these guys is actually better to use the Lancer than the Thunderbolt, because the Lancer uh, has a higher... Uh, rate of uh, fire? Rate. Yeah. I'm getting the impression these is, this is one of those situations where if we take too long, one of these things is going to turn off again. There we go. Oh uh, yeah, I spoil it in the thread, but I guess I can talk about it now. So, one of my personal theories about where the plot was going was that um, uh, we were actually the threat that Cantor was building all the auto ops to prepare against. However, his surprise at seeing us here, I think, pretty much invalidates that. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Building off of, uh, yeah, building off of where Laylight was. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, you guys talking. I get too okay, talking a lot. Uh, Laylight, building off what he said earlier, it was, uh, you know, wondering what the state of Cantor was and if he had already merged him with the Singularity. I was wondering if he was the third, um, uh, what are they called? Guardians? That sovereign. Thing. Sovereign, thank you. Wondering if he was the third sovereign there. Nope, not quite, but we'll get more about that next level.